So hi everybody and welcome back. What we have on our bench today is the Foxeer Legend 1 uh, action camera from Surveil Zone. You can see from the picture it's a, a camera in the popular Mobius or Runcam format. And what makes this camera special is that it supports full HD uh, 1080p at 60 frames per second. That is really nice from the specs. So let's see what we have in here. Comes in this nice box. <coughs> what do we see first here is a nice manual. I already took a look at it. It is a really nice manual. It's in English, not Chinglish. So it really describes this camera nicely and all of its functions. Then of course we have the camera itself. Let's take that out. So this is the camera itself. As you can see here we have the heat sinks, which we also know from other cameras in this format. Uh, two buttons are here, one for turning it on and for changing the mode and one for actually starting the recording or uh, taking the photo. In the back here we have a micro HDMI port and the USB port and the LED. In the side here we have the slot for the micro SD card. In the front we have the lens which is a 166 degrees lens with an F value of 2.5. So let's see what the weight of this is. <clears throat> so this comes in at 51 grams. Which is quite awesome for such a camera. Let's, let's compare this with other cameras in this format. So for example, let's take the run cam here. That comes in at 45 grams. Or for example the Mobius with the uh, lens C. Which comes in at 48 grams, so they are all very similar. So let's take a look at the size comparison of this. <coughs> we have the Fox here, here. Then let's put the Mobius here. And on the other side the run cam. And you can see those are very similar in size. And if we take a look at the width, we can also see this is very similar. Of course, with the big advantage of the Foxeer that it is available of shooting full HD at 60 frames per second and 720p even at 120 frames per second. So this is really nice. Let's uh, quickly go through the basic functionality of this unit. You just turn it on by pressing this button. It will, it will beep sometimes and then you are in the default mode <clears throat> which means a full HD recording at 60 frames per second. You can change this mode. Now this LED is yellow which means 720p recording at 120 frames per second. And there is as one more mode which is the photo mode and in this mode it will be able to, to make photos with 16 megapixels. Basically what is in here is the same hardware as the Xiaomi Yi. So this makes it a, a really really nice camera. And of course it also comes with a PC software uh, as you know from Mobius and other cameras uh, which allows you to change the settings for this mode. So there are some more video formats available but Basically, I think most of you will leave it at 1080p with 60 frames per second. That's really nice. It gives you a really smooth video at full HD. 720p at 120 frames per second, which is really nice for these action shots. So you can really do some slow motion stuff with that. And the 16 megapixel photos, of course. But there is more to this camera. And we will take a look at this now. So if we further unbox this, 
we see of course it comes with its standard uh, micro uh, yeah micro USB cable or was it mini USB I don't know with the standard USB cable to uh, uh, just connect it to your computer but there is also more <clears throat> it comes also with this cable this cable is uh, actually two cables in one actually three cables in one <laughs> So this simply plugs into your USB port and we have three server connectors here. One yellow and black is for the FPV live out, for the live out, uh, which can be used if you uh, not only want to record with this camera, but also use it as a board camera to actually fly your craft. Here red and black is for power. Simply put five volts in here and it will uh, charge or even power this camera. It's again very similar to what we have with the Mobius and the Runcam. And another one, this is new. This is a control server which allows you to remote control this camera from your radio, which we will also take a look at. So what we will do next? Next we will uh, do some latency measurements, the same uh, as we did for the Mobius, for the Runcam and, and, and recently for the, for the Sky HD. And after that I will present to you how this uh, radio remote control works. Okay, so we are now ready to do our latency measurements using our well-known method which I presented you in my earlier uh, videos. So let's put some power to the screen here. <coughs> This screen is directly connected to the FPV out cable of the Mobius. You can ignore these two components for now. These two we will later uh, use uh, to show you the radio transmitter remote control. But we are basically interested in the latency now. So I will just plug this live cable in. Turn the camera on. And as you can see we already have a uh, picture here. And we are ready to perform our measurements of latency. So the first thing uh, which we will measure now is the latency when the camera is not recording, as always. Uh, you can, as always, uh, check this yourself. At any time you want to measure the latency, simply stop the video, uh, subtract these two values from each other and then you know the latency. So let's get started with that. <clears throat> so this is now the latency uh, without any recording done. As said before, simply stop this video now and subtract the numbers to see for yourself what the latency is. Now I'm turning on full HD recording. The camera is now in full HD recording mode. And again, you can simply subtract these numbers from each other and you will have the latency when you stop the video. I am now stopping the full HD recording. I am moving to 720p recording at 120 frames per second. And I am starting the recording now. Okay, let's move this antenna about here. And you can again simply stop the recording and you can measure, that way you can measure the latency for yourself. Okay, so that concludes our latency measurements and we will discuss them in a minute. Okay, so now we have finished our latency measurements and we got some results here. Pretty impressive results, I might add. The Fox here, when not doing any recording, has a latency of just 97 milliseconds. That's very low. If you remember our previous uh, measurements, the Mobius in this mode without recording had 134 milliseconds. That's a bit more. Also, the Runcam had a lot more. It came in at 166 milliseconds. And only the Sky HD01 was similar 
to the Foxeer here with 100 milliseconds without recording. When it is recording, this time at 720p, and remember, the Foxeer here has the double the frame rate of the other cameras. It records 720p at 120 frames per second with a latency of only 67 milliseconds. That is really low. Well, because compared to this, only the Mobius can really hold up to that. It records 720p, but at only 60 frames per second, so at only half the frame rate, and has the same latency. The Runcam has a higher latency. When the Runcam records 720p at 60 frames per second, it has a latency of over 100 milliseconds. And now, then again, at the 1080p at 60 frames per second setting, so this is again something only the Foxeer can do, it comes in again at only 97 milliseconds of latency. That's a very low latency. When you compare it to the Mobius, the Mobius had a latency of 134 milliseconds at 1080p, again only at half the frame rate of the Foxeer. And the Runcam had also a latency, similar to the Mobius, the same latency of 134 milliseconds. So the only camera which really was even a bit uh, faster here than the Foxeer was the Sky HD 01, which came in at just 67 milliseconds of delay with full HD recording, but again only at 30 frames per second. So uh, the 60 frames per second is really a, a winning factor here of the Foxeer. So this concludes the latency measurements. Of course, again, I always say that for the hardcore FPV mini quad pilots, every millisecond counts. They will probably not use the Foxeer or any of these cameras as a board camera. They will always use a dedicated board camera with a CCD uh, chip, probably. But for everyone else, uh, the Foxeer with 97 milliseconds at 1080p 60 frames per second, or even 67 milliseconds, that's really low, at 720p and 100 frames per second, can without any problems also be used as a board camera. Not for the top racing mini quads, but for everything else, that's perfect. So what we will do next is to show you the radio transmitter remote control for the Foxeer. This should be interesting. Okay, so welcome back. We will now uh, test the uh, UAV, they call it UAV remote control of the Foxeer. Which simply means that you can remote control the Foxeer through your radio. What uh, did I do here? Uh, as you can see, I have a regular ESC here, which I'm simply using as a PEC. I just need 5 volts of power to run this receiver. So I will do that now. And as you can see, the receiver is now running. You will probably not see it. It's too, too, uh, too much light here. But uh, the receiver is running. I have already bound this receiver to my Taranis. And what I also did is, uh, I have uh, used this remote control cable, which I showed you earlier, and put it on channel 4 of this receiver. You can put it, of course, on any channel. The important uh, thing here is that the channel where you put the remote control for the Foxeer needs to be a three-stage switch. So like that one. One, two, three. That is what you need. And it needs to be programmed uh, to, to, to send on the channel where the uh, remote control for the Foxeer is plugged in, of course. I will quickly show this to you. I hope you can see it. So I have this on channel 4. You can see that's minus 100, zero, plus 100. I hope you can see it on the display. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't matter. So how does this work? Okay, we have here uh, power for the, for the receiver. We will also, just to watch it on the screen, put some power to, the, uh, to our LCD screen here and then put this into the, the fox here, the right way around. Then we power on the fox here. 
And for now, of course, there is nothing much. We only have the life out again. So how does this work? You have to uh, uh, teach your frog here uh, with which setting it should do which thing. <laughs> that sounds a bit more complicated than it really is. Basically, first you have to press this recording button for two seconds. Now you can see that this LED here flashes and basically this only tells the fox here, okay, be ready to learn something. Then you leave this button, this switch, at the center position and when it is at the center position you press the recording button again for two seconds. This means the fox here now knows what the center position of the switch is. You now put this uh, switch to the top position and again press this for two seconds to teach the fox here what is the top position of the switch. Now it has learned that. And now you put the switch to the bottom position, as you can see here, I hope you can see it, and again press this for two seconds, the recording button. And now it's done. You can put this back on the center position and if everything works I can now remote control the fox here. If I uh, put the switch to the top, the fox here will start taking pictures. You can see that here every three seconds it will take a picture as long as that switch is set to the top. You can see that. If I put it again to the center it's nothing, it's just a board camera and if I put the uh, switch to the low position it will start recording now. So now the Foxy is recording, you can see it, the LEDs here uh, are uh, blinking and now it is recording. So as easy as that, I can also stop the recording again now, so as easy as that you can remote control your Fox here through this transmitter once you have done that once, it will also remember your settings, of course. You do not have to teach it again every time. This is very nice. And I think that's a really, really nice feature. Because that means, for example, when you are flying and taking video and you have a really beautiful scene you want to take a photo of, you just stop the video, uh, make some photos which have a better quality than the actual uh, snapshots from a recording and then simply again continue the record. So this is really nice. It's a really nice feature. This also concludes our bench review of the Fox here. Up to now I am really impressed by this camera. The next thing which we will do is of course assess the video quality. I will put this on one of my mini quads and uh, do a live video quality review like I did the earlier times. So this will be uh, one of the next videos which we will publish. Well, I really like this camera. If you like this camera, if you like my reviews, please leave a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. It really means a lot to me. And see you next time.